Hello and welcome to today's video. Today I am continuing my Diamine Ink review series from August 2022. If you are not watching this in August 2022, go and check out my channel because there are a number of really great Diamine reviews uh, that I've done. And uh, this is the latest. So this is Ancient Copper. I think a lot of people are familiar with, but one I haven't got around to reviewing. So I thought I'd better get it done here. See, it's a lovely rusty sort of uh, brown uh, with a bit of sheen there. Uh, we're going to look at it on some different sorts of paper and have a bit of a chat about it. So let's start with the ink here on Tomo River paper. This is standard 68 GSM Tomo River paper, the good old stuff we know and love. Um, so I have this in two pens, a Twisby Go Broad and Twisby Go Extra Fine as per usual. Once again, you can see that swab there, lovely rusty red sort of coming through. Um, it's very, very nice. These five points, the first three kind of being standards. First, made in Liverpool in England. Uh, the company has been around since 1864, so they've got a great track record of producing stuff and they really know what they're doing. The third point is that it's safe. So the, this ink can be used in fountain pens and vintage pens. Dye mine inks are considered safe. But, and this is important, this ink is prone to clogging. And what that means is it doesn't mean like clogging up in the feed and things like that. Anywhere where there's relatively uh, airtight, it will be fine. But for instance, on the nib, um, you see reports, and I've seen this a number of times when I've used this ink. This is an ink I use regularly because I think it's a nice ink. But uh, if you're using an pen that doesn't have a great seal uh, on the cap, um, you will notice some like clogging around the feed and what that looks like. It kind of looks like um, little bits of like, but this ink, clay and things like that. This is normal or um, kind of like a known thing with ready brownie inks. Uh, it's just part of the chemical makeup of the ink and oxygen that it's uh, it's got access to. The last point here is that it is one of Dye Mine's most popular inks. Um, and so of all the inks they produce, this is one of those ones that like is constantly, you know, it, most retailers who sell Dye Mine will retail this. It sells well. Uh, and people generally really like it. I think it's got a great color and it's clear to see why. So let's talk about the performance now. It's got a slower dry time. So after two seconds, it was still fairly wet. And after 20, we still got a pretty decent smear. It had started to dry, but you know, uh, that's what it is. I've got low water resistance. You can see here where I put the water down and then dab it up. A lot of the ink is gone. You've lost most of the detail there. Like you might be able to just make it out, but you can't certainly can't make out the one, two, three, four that were written in those boxes. It just, it's not got low, it's not got great water resistance. Um, I said it's got nice shade. Like you can see up here, if I look up, up nice and close on the word points that you can see beautiful shading between those lighter and darker colors that come through uh, and decent flow. So it feels nice on the page. Not super wet, but not super dry. Average performance, uh, it's okay. I wouldn't say it's got great performance. I think it's uh, but it's certainly not bad. It's probably in the middle of the pack in terms of how dye mine inks perform. Uh, so it's some clumping on nib and feed. Um, now that is safe, like you can easily clean it off and it, it's, it's fine. It's just something you have to be aware of and also probably just want to make sure when you do clean the pen out when it's had this ink in it, you give it a really proper clean. Extras, good shade, minimal sheen. We saw some sheen here on the on the swab, but uh, you're not gonna get sheen necessarily in writing. There's no shimmer and low water resistance. Now, if we look at the reverse of this page, we're gonna talk about the performance. You see nothing comes through. Where I've added water, a little bit does come through, uh, but for the most part with the writing, it doesn't come through. It's got a decent saturation, so it is gonna show through, particularly paper like Tomo River. But for the most part, I think it performs pretty well there. Let's look at it on some other paper now. And here it is on standard student notepad paper from Spirex, this is from LecturePad. You can see it holds together fairly well. There's a little bit of feathering and spread. It's, you know, like you can see it around the, the I and A of diamine there. It does, it does spread a little bit. Um, but in the, you know, particularly in the extra fine nib, it performs okay. As I said, this is probably on par with the middle of the line pack, middle of the pack in terms of how diamine performs. Next here on Reflex copy paper, it's holding a bit tighter, but there's still a little bit of spread and feather. This is not fountain pen friendly paper. We wouldn't expect it to perform perfectly. Um, but on the back once again, same sort of thing. You can see these other dye mines I've been reviewing. It's kind of middle of the line. It's, I think there are inks that perform better, but there are definitely inks that perform worse. And then lastly here on Rhodia. Nice color. I think the color looks great here. Rhodia does show up the color of inks beautifully. You see it in the swab, beautiful shading. Look, it's a sheen there, nice. Um, 
you know, it's, it's quite wet there on the page uh, and uh, beautiful rich dark colours. And then if you look at where I've put the water down and that's where I put water down and then I just let it dry. Uh, you can see a lot of the ink colour has moved out, uh, leaving a dull sort of pinky red behind and then sort of this darker, almost purple brown sort of line of where the line was originally. So you are going to lose a lot of your detail, a lot of your detail if this gets wet. Looking at the chromatography here, you see basically what you saw in that uh, previous water test. Orangey, pinky sort of colours at the top, hanging around with a beautiful, bright, vibrant yellow. And this sort of like purple, brown, magenta at the bottom here, which I think is really lovely. Um, and so you get a very lovely spread through that, you know, sort of like sunset almost of colours uh, in this ancient copper ink. So for the colour comparison today, I wanted to do a few things. Firstly, I wanted to show it alongside a red. So I've got Waterman Audacious Red, which is like there, which is for me is like one of those stock standard great red ink colours. Waterman, you know, really solid on their, you know, regular line of inks. I then wanted to show it alongside an orange because it's also not orange. So you see, it's a lovely, interesting mix of those, but also I wanted to show it alongside a reddy brown. And so what I've chosen is Monteverde Pumpkin Cake. Um, you can see some similarities there, but Ancient Copper actually has a really lovely lighter orangey brown colour. Um, a couple of other colours I wanted to show alongside, and this is probably one of my most exhaustive uh, colour comparisons, is because this is such a beautiful, unique colour. Monteverde Copper Noir, so another sort of like darker copper kind of colour, much oranger, much more red, less brown. Um, and then something like Diplomat Caramel, which is made by Octopus Fluids, has some interesting com similarities in the lighter shading there. So it's that lighter brown colour that uh, is so interesting. And then a comparison I stole from, or not stole, I took from Robert Oster's lineup. This is Aussie Brown. Um, it's got a little bit more darker in the darker shading. And some, It's a bit more brown, but it gives you an idea of where this Diamine Ancient Copper Ink kind of sits in the colour world. So talking about the price of this ink now, I've priced both the 30ml and the 80ml bottles using Australian dollars, US dollars, and the British pound. So $8.95 Australian for the 30ml and $19.95 for the 80ml. We've got $7.50 US for the 30ml and $16.50 US for the 80ml. And then £2.45 for the 30ml and £6.25 for the 80ml. Putting this ink in a very, very healthy place in the price spectrum um, per mil, it's one of the, you know, dye mine inks are really, really great value. Now, I've given this ink three out of five. I think the colour is absolutely amazing. That is an astounding colour and it's got great depth and really nice shading. But, and, oh, and it's easy to see why this ink is so popular. But there are some performance issues. Clumping around the nib and feed if it's left, you know, out. Uh, you know, it won't happen on every pen, but it happens enough to, to mention it. Uh, also, the low water resistance. And then, like, just some basic feathering and bleeding stuff. And I know that's on non-fountain pen friendly paper, but still, we don't always get the opportunity to write on high quality paper. So I've given this three out of five. It's a good ink, just with some little faults and flaws you need to be aware of. So I hope you found this video about Ancient Copper from Dye Mine to be interesting and useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications button if you want to stay up to date with the videos that I produce. And please feel free to get in touch using any of the platforms listed below. You can find me on Instagram or Twitter at the underscore offstage underscore me. Or you can contact me on any of my videos here. If you've got products you think I should be looking at. Or if there is a way you would like to support this channel by sponsoring a review or providing an item for review. I would love to hear from you. In the meantime... Enjoy your inks, enjoy writing, and I'll talk to you soon.